Do you think that you need the best quality materials to paint like this? In this full length painting tutorial, I'll show you how to paint these pretty Chinese lanterns in watercolour using inexpensive materials. So let's go with this budget painting challenge. Okay, so I've done a really simple outline of the Chinese lanterns like this. Really, really simple to do. I've actually traced them down and we have a line drawing and reference photographs to accompany this tutorial. And I'll tell you later on how you can have free access to this. Now I'm using really inexpensive paper today. This one's a sort of mixed media paper by Dale Rowney. It costs about eight pounds here in the UK. So I'm trying to keep everything as cheap as possible for this watercolor painting challenge. I haven't used this paper before, so um, everything you see here will be as new to me as it is to you. And the paints I'm using are by Magic Fly. This is a 36 tube set, and I'm only using about five or six colors from this set today. And it also comes with three little brushes within the box. And I'm going to be using um, a couple of these brushes as well. So again, this is all new to me. On the side of the box, it tells you about the opacity of the paints. So um, like I said, I haven't used this paint before, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. And these are the colors that I've chosen for the tutorial. Um, they are Gamboge, Vermilion, Scarlet Red, Yellow Ochre, Seaweed and Yellow Green. And I will link all of the descriptions, including the link to the uh, paints that I'm using in the description box underneath this video. I have in my hand here a couple of the spotter brushes that I would normally use. I'm just going to start off with them, but then I switch to the brushes that are within the kit to make it a really fair challenge. So this is Gamboge and I'm going to be putting little blobs of these tubes into my little ceramic dish that I have here. Noticing that the undertone of the watercolour painting will have a kind of yellowy base, so that's what we're going to do here. And I'm using to start with my spotter brush, but like I said, to make it a fair challenge, I switched to this brush a little later on, which I will use throughout the tutorial. So I'm just adding some water with my pipette here and just adding a water glaze to the area that I want the paint to go. So this is going to begin by painting wet in wet, which simply means that I'm going to be adding water to the paper where I want the paint to go. At this point, I need to apologize for my rather croaky voice. I've been sick all week with a flu type thing, so I really hope that you can understand me. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just adding some water to the two pigments here and mixing them into a watery consistency. We want the paint to be um, fairly uh, liquid at this point. We don't want it to be sticky. We just want to drop that paint in as our base tone. I haven't used this particular mixed media paper before, so I'm not sure how it's going to perform and the same with the paint. So we're just testing these out as we go to see what results we can get. I just wanted to show you that you don't necessarily have to buy really, really expensive paints to create paintings that you can be proud of. So let's see how I get on. You can see me using the tip of the brush here to just push that paint into the pencil line like this and I'm patting it dry on my kitchen towel to the right of the screen to take off the excess which helps move the paper, move the paint where I want it to go. If you have too much pigment or water on the brush you'll find that you will lose control. That's why I'm using my paper towel to just pat the brush on like that and just move it where I want it to go. I'm actually using a few different reference photographs for this tutorial. When I did the composition, I found that it wasn't quite right. So I took my um, different photographs to compile this composition, if that makes sense. And I'll put the links to all of the photographs and the line drawing that we are using today in our Facebook group. Um, we're a wonderful community over there. And if you join us there, which is of course free, you can have access to all the line drawings and the reference photographs that accompany the tutorials that I have here on YouTube. So do take a look, I'll put the link in the box underneath this video. 
So because all of these have a kind of yellow undertone, apart from the little green one on the end, I'm just adding the yellow ochre and the gamboge to the paint, as you can see here, to the paper, as you can see. So this will give us our base tone on which we will build later. If you're new to watercolour painting, I suggest that you watch this video all the way through so that you can see the tricky process that, um, so that you can sort of skip through that tricky part that, think, that you may think looks a bit wrong and see how the process unfolds as we work through. Watercolour painting is all about adding layers and it's important that you let each layer dry before you apply the next. I have a mixture here of vermilion added to the palette and I've added a bit of water and it really doesn't matter if it merges in with the other two colours because I'm not actually working true to the photograph for this tutorial. I'm just kind of making it up a little bit as I go along but just using the reference photographs as a guide. Notice how that paint is blurring softly into the dampened paper and I can use that brush to manipulate the paint where I want it to go. As I said, I haven't used this particular mixed media paper before, um, but I have done a full tutorial on the different types of watercolor paper and how they handle with the paint. And if this is something that interests you, I will link it in the information card on the screen right now and also in the description box underneath this video. So for this little green lantern on the end, I'm adding a yellow green to my palette with a little bit of water, again working wet in wet, and just dropping in that water where I want the paint to go. The first washes should be really, really watery because we are going to build on them later. If we put the paint on too thickly too quickly, it means that it will just go, or there's the possibility for it to go a little bit muddy and looking untidy. So I'm just dropping in this really bright yellow green. Now, of course, this is a budget paint challenge, so I'm using these budget materials. But of course, if you have got your own materials and you don't want to go out and buy anything, then please use what you have in your kit. Usually you will find something very, very similar. But this is kind of aimed at people who maybe don't have paints and don't want to splash out a lot of money on expensive materials. I just want to show you that you can achieve something with less expensive tools. You can see how I'm kind of mixing these colors together on my palette, again with a little bit of water. We don't want to take the paint directly from the palette without any water added to it because it makes it too sticky. And already I'm finding that the handling of these inexpensive paints really, really good. I'm happy with them so far, but I must say that I did find the paper a little bit bitty and a little bit grainy. So I'm not too sure about this particular one, but we'll carry on and see how we go. So I switched to the brush that was included within the kit. This is a number six size round, and I have to say, I'm absolutely delighted with it. For, um, I guess for the cost, which is included in the price, and I think the paint's got something like, um, I don't know, 18 pounds here in the UK in Amazon. And for 36 paints, I have to say, I think they're incredible value for money. And so if you're starting out painting, this is something that I would definitely recommend getting. So you can see me adding the green tone to the stem like this using the tip of that number six round. I have to say that the tip of this brush is incredible and I was really surprised that I was able to get such a sharp edge with such a cheap brush. I'm gonna let that dry. And once it's completely dry, I'm picking up my scarlet and scarlet red and vermilion and I'm just adding a little bit of that to the palette like this. You can see how the colors are merging together on the palette, but it's really, really important that the water is added to the paint. Now, because the paint on the paper is dry, you can see me dropping in a mixture of um, gamboge and yellow ochre and adding it to the dry paint on my paper. Notice how you can see the yellow tone underneath, but now you can build up the colors using the other dark color that I just mixed. It's really important that the paint is dry and you can see me adding here a tiny bit of the seaweed to the um, kind of yellowy color that we have just to add a little bit of shadow. I'm applying the paint directly to the pencil line like this and once I've applied the paint I'm patting my brush dry on the kitchen towel and then just blending it. Again all this blending that I'm doing will be in depth, covered in depth in the paper tutorial that I've linked in the description box underneath if you'd like to take a look at that if that's something that interests you. 
So I've chosen to paint these Chinese lanterns because it's autumn and there's a real autumnal feel in the air in the UK at the moment and I absolutely love autumn, it's my favourite season. So let me know if you have a favourite season, drop it in the comments below. I always like to know um, what people think about um, different times of year. I particularly love the sort of coolness in the air that we've got here and I really love the dark nights. I'm not sure why, but drop it in the comments below, let me know what your favourite season is. Okay, so going back to the tutorial, I'm dropping in here a mixture of the, um, the vermilion with a little bit of scarlet red, just to drop in a little bit of contrast and a little bit more colour on that pencil line at the top as you can see. And I'm just blending it once again with that damp brush. I'm working um, on each little lantern in turn. And like I said, I'm not being too fussy, um, sort of staying true to the reference photograph for this tutorial. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along, if you like, and just blending in that paint as I go to create that soft edge. So I'm just using the reference photographs as a little bit of a guide for this tutorial. And if you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's a really, um, it really does help to support me and my channel more than you know. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already. We release new content every single Tuesday. And if you hit that notification bell, YouTube will let you know once I post up the content. So again, work in section by section. And you can see I've, I've missed out the middle one because the section I've painted is still damp and we didn't want, we don't want the paint to uh, splurge into that damp paint. So I'm just missing that while it dries and focusing on the outside edge here with a little bit of yellow ochre along with those two um, ready orangey tones, dropping in the paint like this. So you can see how I'm using the tip of this sharp brush just to outline them like this. And you can see the reference photograph here. I'm just using it, as I said, as a kind of, um, just a general guide, I suppose. Just adding that paint. What I will say about this paper is it is quite forgiving in that it lets you um, sort of skip around a little bit, not worrying too much about letting the paint absolutely dry, but it can give you that blending ability, even if it's settled into the paper. I would say don't leave it too long before you blend the paint as I'm doing here because you don't want it to be too dry. You may struggle a little bit, but it doesn't matter if it's a little bit of time and it gives you that ability to blend like this. So this next one has definitely got more of a red tone. So we're adding Scarlet Lake and Vermilion to this um, in sort of equal measures, I suppose. Some of the areas you'll see have more of a, a brighter red tone and some have more of a, an orangey tone. And I'd like to kind of keep them separate just to give it a little bit of tonal value and tonal contrast. Noticing how I'm leaving a little bit of a gap between each of the, the curves, the, the little veins within the lanterns, this helps create form. And when people look at your painting, they'll see that it's not flat. So already we have like a three-dimensional look for your painting. You can see how um, by adding these in layers, you can still see the initial layer underneath. And by building up these colors slowly and surely, you can see how it helps give form to each of these little Chinese lanterns. Now already I'm really, really happy with these paints. Um, and I have to say, hand on heart, I'm quite surprised that because they're so inexpensive, I mean, something like 18 pounds for 36 paints and three brushes is insane. Now, I can't speak about the longevity of the paints, how long they're going to last in the tubes, because I've, I've just come across them. And I certainly wouldn't like to vouch for their sort of light fastness or anything like that. But in terms of paint application and how easy they are to work with, I have to say I'm really surprised because they are absolutely lovely. So mixing the yellow green and just applying it onto this little green lantern on the bottom with a tiny bit more of the uh, seaweed green, just to add a little bit more contrast. You can see I'm just dropping it in and we can still see that lighter green underneath, wiggling my brush and softening through the colors.
So if you are enjoying this tutorial and botanical painting is something that interests you, we do have a Patreon site that has, at the time of filming this tutorial, four different levels starting at £3 per month plus VAT. And it's, um, we have full length painting tutorials on there that are completely different to the YouTube tutorials and are of course ad free. And if this is something that interests you, then I will put the link in the description so that you can link through to that. Plus it's a way of you helping to support my channel. So do take a look if you'd like to know a little bit more about botanical painting. Right, so back to the matter in hand. Let's go back to these beautiful little lanterns and continue to build up the paint like this. Go into the vermilion and scarlet red on this second one down, noticing once again that I'm leaving a little bit of a gap and negatively painting around those folds. Don't worry if they look too stark at the moment, that's easily sorted later with a plain water glaze. It's just important that you get those in place to begin with. and just letting it dry before we apply the other layers. So I'm just mixing up the gamboge with a tiny bit of yellow ochre. Again, we want to strengthen up the colors now that we've already applied. So if we had applied the paint at the beginning in a thicker consistency, it wouldn't allow us to do this. It's really, really important that the layers are watery to start with because it will go muddy and sticky on your painting. If this is something that you've encountered in the past, and I'm sure we all have as beginners, then tip is to make sure that your paint is watery and add many, many layers rather than one or two thicker layers, which will make it look really, really untidy. So just building these up, and even with these inexpensive paints, I can still get the layers and transparency that I need.
So just adding some water to my palette and as you can see the colors that I'm mixing here. So using the tip of that brush just to sharpen up any edges here and always, always blend your paint into the existing uh, paint on your paper by cleaning your brush and patting it dry. As I said, I've covered this in a different video if you'd like to have a more kind of in-depth look into how I blend my paints and I will link it in the description box underneath this video. The colour payoff that you get from these Magic Fly watercolour paints is absolutely incredible. I have to say that um, I'm, I'm quite surprised. So yeah, if you're looking for a budget set of paints, then I really recommend these. So once again, just using the tip of my brush to blend those colours together. And when I'm blending them together, I'm using a really light touch because you don't want to move the paint around too much. So now that we have all the green tones in place for this bottom lantern here, I'm just accentuating some of the darker values by adding a bit of the uh, seaweed and yellow green in a slightly thicker consistency, but it's still movable as you can see here. And just picking it up and dropping it in some more like this. This helps give it um, some form and it stops it from looking too flat. Now at this point you can see me using the tip of this really fine brush to create a bit of texture and a bit of um, veining to the Chinese lantern like this. And I've gone to the smaller size brush, this is actually, um, it's called a liner, it's a size zero and I'm using this to paint in some veins. And I'm using seaweed and yellow green to do this. You can see how I'm picking up just a tiny bit of pigment and using the very tip of the brush to create these very, very fine veins.
So I'm just taking this opportunity now to strengthen the stalk or the stem of the Chinese lanterns and I'm using again a mixture of seaweed and yellow green um, in a slightly thicker consistency so there's a little less water and I'm also using a little bit of the yellow ochre and you can see that I'm applying it um, mostly to the kind of base of it and then just blending it out. So I'm just continuing the process now, building up these layers until the painting is complete. So as an overview to this watercolour painting challenge, do I recommend these budget magic fly paints? 100%. I absolutely love them and I think that um, it's, it's something I would definitely buy if I were new to painting and I were working on a limited budget. So all you can see me doing here is painting water over, so we a plain water glaze over the lanterns just to sort of dumb down the negative painting because they were looking a little bit stark. And we just continue this to its conclusion.